How do you do? I'm Christopher Lee. Not a bad way to travel, really, if you're going to steal in some place, steal something, or even be stolen. When Boccaccio was writing his Decameron, the town of Salerno suffered a plague of thieves. One of the most successful was Ruggiero, but he was a stealer of ladies' hearts. There was a rumor going around the town that he'd had um, slight difficulties with his last girlfriend, but this, of course, was nonsense. They'd had a few words, he shot her, and that was as far as it went. Now we shall see him going much farther. Satisfy my curiosity about your story's ending. <laughs> Petronella and her lover were surprised by her husband, right? <laughs> the best is to come, my dear. Now look here, said Gianello. It's really a perfect but awfully dirty Barbados barrel, and he must clean it up. He simply wouldn't buy it from him as it stood. So as soon as Petronella heard him mention that he wanted the barrel cleaned, she said, Oh, my husband will do it at once, and gave a sly wink to Gianella, her lover. But of course, said her husband, and immediately took off his cuffs, collar and shirt, and without a murmur, got inside. <laughs> then he began to scrub it out. When Petronella saw this, without saying a word, she seized the chance and, pulling herself up, positioning herself comfortably over the mouth of the barrel, proceeded to give her husband instructions. Meanwhile, Gianello took advantage of the moment, moved up behind Petronella, and began satisfying his wild passion for her, her husband being well out of sight at the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> Petronella, enjoying it all immensely, gave her husband instructions. <laughs> Almost perfect here. Just a little more to the right. Yes, that's good. Now you found it. That's it. Scrub a little more to the left, my love. Marvelous, darling. Scrub harder still, my love. Her lover's passion at last having exhausted itself, Gianello gently withdrew. <laughs> And Petronella ordered her husband to get out of the barrel so that she could inspect it properly. <laughs> Gianello also went and inspected the barrel. <laughs> and Petronella then turned to her Gianello and she said, You mustn't accept the barrel, obviously, unless you are completely satisfied with it. Gianello replied, No, it's spotless. It looked very good. And paying the husband three florins, said it was a pleasure to be given such splendid service. <laughs> what a wonderful, Nanette. That was a thrilling story, wasn't it? You will find it difficult to beat Nanette. She really is such a fabulous storyteller, isn't she? For us, she makes everyone come to life in the most remarkable way. It's quite fantastic. You'll have to use your imagination to win the prize, dear. I've no doubt with Angela's perfect face and bright eyes, have complete confidence her story must enthrall and excite us. My most respectable husband, the doctor, told me the story. It was only a few weeks after our marriage took place. He finds it most exhilarating to tell me such tales. It's about this weird old surgeon, the master Matteo of Montana. Having lived as a widower for years, he decided suddenly to marry this exquisitely beautiful young girl he knew. In spite of his old age, she was a kind and considerate husband, giving her everything she could wish for. She adored being spoiled and pampered and spent a fortune on clothes and finery. There was only one thing that dissatisfied the poor girl. She found her husband a bit too aged for her longings and desires, and quite often she felt cold in bed. Her husband's excuse was his exhaustion after work, and eventually she became restless, and dressing up in her newest gown, she would wander through the town, allowing her imagination to run riot, being filled with admiration for the young men she saw there. <laughs> <laughs> Give me my money. Away with you! Let us drink to beauty and to happiness! I 
want that money back. You Beautiful damsels of Salerno, tell this beggar to get out of my sight. Today will be a day of love and merriment for all of us. Who would be fool enough to think of money at such a time? Ah, my pretty Rose, tell those squirming misers to leave us in peace. Otherwise, I won't answer for the consequences. You better warn these pigs that I have a vile temper. <laughs> Even their sour-tempered wives who no doubt love them dearly will not recognize them when they Look get home. Look in now, Rogero. It's five weeks I've been waiting. Listen, I want my... Ah, money. you hear? Leave me, Peppino. Yeah. You pass another <laughs> Interesting, Bosina. I'd say his charms are being completely wasted in the beds of street girls, wouldn't you? Now, beware, my lady. He is Rogero D'Angelo, a scoundrel in Salerno. I've heard his feats are beyond description. There isn't a single living relative in the place has anything to do with the vagabond. It's such a pity. It's sad to think how very lonely the poor fellow must be sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Come to my arms, my pretty little friends. Master Matteo, are you there? Master Matteo, it's too late, my friend. I've already closed for the evening. But please, sir, in Amalfi, there has been a fight. The blood is flowing in the streets. You know, Sapito. Well, he has been wounded, badly. It looks as if it's fatal. Come quickly. Mm. <sighs> Dearest, you heard the dreadful news. I have to leave. Don't fret yourself over nothing. I return by dawn. And meanwhile, will you tell Rosina to take this bottle to old Francis for his leg? Don't be sad. Rest yourself till my return. Rosina! Rosina! You called, my lady? Look. The master has just left. Yes, isn't it wonderful? I have a whole evening to myself. This is a night for love. Make haste, Rosina. Please hurry. Quanto amico! La 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 felt as though she were a virgin as she approached the bed. Imagine how nervous she was. She was trembling with anticipation. There he lay, this lusty, virile young man, a stranger to her. He just lay there without uttering a single word, as though he were dead. Passion, however, overcame her shyness and... Oh, my darling, at last we're together. Oh. <laughs> Games with me. 
Waste of time, you coming here if all you want to do is sleep. Forgive me, Holy Mother. My lady! Now perhaps you will wake up, my great lover. My lady, what are you doing? Oh, Rosina, he is dead. You must be mistaken. <clears throat> You're right, he is dead. Mamma mia, how did it happen? I should have controlled myself. My good lady, please forgive me, please. Oh, what can we do with him? Stop worrying, my sweet lady. Before the master returns, we will have got rid of this car. Where shall we put the body? If it's left outside the house, everybody is going to suspect that he was here visiting me. Then what? Calm yourself. Only this morning, I saw a chest outside the cabinet maker's, and I just had a perfect idea. We'll take the body and leave it in the chest for someone to find. Did ever you see such a handsome face? Such a waste of life, and gifted with the strength of a lion. But we must make it look as though he's been attacked by some villain or other. Ah, he's got a knife. This will do. Oh, please, Rosina. Stab or two. No, please don't. Don't bark his beautiful body. Leave him to sleep peacefully. Help me lift him then. Come along. Oh, Rosina. Right, my husband. Of fight. Don't worry. She's pale as a ghost. The poor girl is suffering as though it really happened. The two conspirators then dragged the heavy chest with the body down the street. They left it outside the cabinet maker's house and hurried home without being seen. That same evening, Stefano and Peppino, who were returning home late, saw the box there and believing they'd found a treasure, picked up the chest and carried it inside. <laughs> Oh, shh, silence, you idiot. Easy now. That stupid cabinet maker has made this box of lead. Shut up, you fool. It's mahogany, I tell you. And believe me, it's worth a fortune in itself. Wonder what's inside. <coughs> this way. Oh. Quietly, or you'll wake our wives. Oh. Shh. This will do. Oh. Shall we wait and open it in the morning, then? Yes, leave it there. We mustn't disturb our wives. However, the surprise awakening the wives got that night thrilled them. You've been my love, sleepyhead. Come on. <clears throat> my lady, you're cheating. Mm. One, two, 
Three. It is quite true, your lordship. I owe Pepino 150 florins, so I went to the house that night to see if they'd give me time to pay. Can I write it? To pay the debt. Uh, but they didn't understand. Can I write it? <laughs> and you didn't pay them, but stole their money instead. So they say. <laughs> me, me. <laughs> and now you pay for your villainy by hanging from the gallows, my man. The news of Ruggiero's arrest spread like wildfire through Salerno. The poor lady and her servant racked their brains trying to think of some way to help. But as things were, there was absolutely nothing they could do. You can imagine how miserable they both felt. Rosina, wake up, child. Dearest wife, I'm here at last. I've flown back to your arms, my pretty little bird. I've had the most awful time in Amalfi. However, I'll tell you about that later. I've got to go now to see that patient with the bad leg. He must be suffering agony. Why, Rosina, what were you thinking of? You've forgotten to deliver the bottle. Bring it here. The poor fellow must be going out of his mind. What's this? This bottle was full when I left it yesterday. What on earth goes on in this house? Every time my back's turned, there's something goes wrong always. Oh, come, it's only a few drops of water after all. Surely you don't have to cry and splutter over such a small matter. It seems unnecessary to make this fuss. Most probably it is, but you don't understand. This was a special draft for poor old Francis to help him get some sleep. This was a sleeping draft, and whoever it was drank this stuff must have slept well. Hm. Everyone here seems to be awake. Run along, my little wizard, and prepare a fresh mixture. Huh. Now we know what happened to Ruggiero. We must make plans quickly. Tell me, what news have you got? My lady Ruggiero's in terrible danger of his life. They say they found him guilty and it's going to be a public hanging at sunrise. There's no one to speak for him. Somehow we have to prove his innocence. I have an idea. You must speak to my husband, Rosina. <laughs> Excuse me, master. I must confess the truth, my master. Please don't be angry with me. What have you been doing? I dare say you must have heard of Ruggiero D'Angelo. Well, you see, master, he became attracted to me, and eventually, in spite of myself, I tried so hard, I lost my head over him and fell desperately in love. When he heard you were away on business, he came here last night and and persuaded me to let him stay the night in my room. He wouldn't accept no as an answer. He forced himself upon me. I could do nothing. Suddenly he felt terribly thirsty, and as my lady was asleep, you understand? And before I could fetch him a drink from the kitchen, he picked up this flask and drank. Oh, forgive me, master. Well, the next thing I knew, within a few moments, you see, 
He was lying there. Believe me, I thought he was dead. I was out of my mind, as you can imagine. I was frightened that I killed him. Oh, my dear master, forgive me. I know how angry you are. Please. The worst of the story is to come yet. I hid him in this chest. Then I left it for lost in the street. But now they're talking of hanging him. Save him, good master. Be merciful. Explain to the judge it was my fault. <laughs> now, now, it's no use crying over a drop of spilled milk. I admit it was a dreadful letdown. Just because I was out for the night, you thought you'd fulfill your desires. But he slept instead, didn't he? It was bad luck. Poor Rosina. <laughs> Off with you then and save this bandit from the gallows. And if you wish to take yourself a lover in the near future, stop being foolish and marry the scoundrel. Save yourself all this trouble. A thousand thanks, master. Ulilem yongo serca drżący, jąg, która wszystkim mi na ziemi, że usta do skroń ze skronią. A visitor for you, Maso del Scandigo, the beautiful Rosina, come to see you. Maso del Scandigo, I hope you don't mind me calling. I just thought you must get a little hungry here sometimes all by yourself, and I brought you a few tasty bits of chicken. In the meanwhile, could I have a few words with your prisoner there? Me, 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 <laughs> Your Lordship, please, you've got to listen. I swear on my mother's head, this poor fellow is the victim of a dreadful injustice. I will listen to you, pretty Rosina. <laughs> I must have a little kiss first. <laughs> Nikt mi wie szczęścia zamocić nie może. It was really a most amusing afternoon, his lordship being more than satisfied. So Rosina told how she awaited her lover eagerly, how he was thirsty and swallowed the sleeping draught by mistake, and then how she believed she had accidentally killed him in ecstasy. How terrified she put him in a chest and left him outside the house for dead. Ruggiero, when questioned, did remember going to the doctor's house for some reason or other, he also remembered he was thirsty, and after drinking from the bottle, he woke up in the chest in Pepino's house. <laughs> that was unfortunate for you. <laughs> Your business was to make the young lady happy in bed. <laughs> I find the defendant guilty of neglecting his duties as a lover and would not blame the young lady in question were she to find another. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> hmm. I must now pass judgment on you. Ruggiero D'Angelo, I find you not guilty of trespass and housebreaking. The prosecutors, on the other hand, Peppino and Stefano, I find guilty of false testimony and sentence you. Ooh. Shall I write it? <laughs> <laughs> From then on, my friends, it was the most harmonious household you could imagine. The situation was perfect. Ruggiero most obligingly kept his mistress content, and in the meantime, he never neglected his duty as husband to Rosina. <laughs> As for the old doctor, friends, he decided where innocence was bliss, it was funny to be wise. I only wish I could work out such a plan in my household. One thing I'm sure of, ladies, I wouldn't keep my lover locked up in a chest all day. <laughs> Bravo! I have the honor of presenting this to the cleverest storyteller in Florence. <laughs> That's what comes of taking the wrong medicine. You never know what can happen.